Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about Luciferian transformation in administration, the image to the beast. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan Strategic Command, dedicated to advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 23. We've been studying for the past several lessons. I'm going to read that for you guys now. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend by the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall nearly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, and made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as a raiment of those that are slain, thrust with the sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them at barrel, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities for I, will, for I will rise up against them saith the Lord of hosts and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew saith the Lord I will also make it a possession for the bittern and the pools of water and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction saith the Lord of hosts Okay, guys, Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 23. In verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? We see Lucifer's vertical detachment from the glory of God and the abode of truth as the origin of all lies. John 14, 6, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, John chapter 17, verse 3, Psalm chapter 101, verse 8 and 7, excuse me, Psalm chapter 101, verse 8 and 7, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers, all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house, and he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. This is absolutely crystal clear what this passage is depicting here. This cutting off here, while it is a different Hebrew word than the cutting off that appears in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou cut down to the ground? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weakens the nations? It's a different Hebrew word, but its root meaning is the same. Is the same. It means to cut down, to cut off, and to cut asunder. So, I personally believe it's depicting exactly it's what it's depicting. It's depicting um, um, a similitude of this vertical detachment uh, that Lucifer experiences as he transforms into Satan. It's being imposed upon all the wicked people of the earth that do not receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. So Isaiah 4, 14, 12, we see Lucifer's vertical detachment from the glory of God and the abode of truth as the origin of all lies. John 14, 6, John 8, 31 and 32, John 17, 3, I'm the way. Uh, true, no, excuse me, John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Psalm chapter 101, verse 8 and 7. Psalm chapter 36, verse 8 and 9, which I believe is an amazing passage of Scripture. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them to drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. That's an amazing, to me, that's an amazing passage of Scripture that has a voluminous amount of information in it. We may go over that in detail in, in, uh, in future lessons. So uh, verse 13 and 14, we see Lucifer's motives motives for rebelling against the glory of God, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 through 8. And finally, in verse 15, we see Lucifer's transformation into Satan, inhabiting hell, 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved under judgment, Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So we see in verse 15, we see, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. We see Lucifer's vertical, we see, excuse me, we see Lucifer's transformation into, into Satan inhabiting hell to Peter 2, 4, Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11, as the resonant power of death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12, and of where, of course, is Lucifer is cast out of heaven. There's The war occurs in heaven, and, and Satan is, it's actually Satan at this point, Satan is cast out of heaven. 
as the abode of deceit for all flesh and the warning is giving woe unto you um, heaven and earth and the sea for the devils come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth but that he hath but a short time woe to the habitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he, that he hath but a short time and John 8 44 if you ever follow the devil unless your father will, you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there's no truth in him when he abode not in the truth because there's no truth his habitation is not in truth he, he abides not in the truth because there's no truth in him when he speaketh of a lie he speaketh of his own because he is a liar and the father of it John chapter 8 verse 44 so verse 15 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit of Isaiah chapter 14, we see Lucifer's uh, uh, complete vertical uh, detachment from the glory of God and his transformation into Satan and his casting out of heaven um, to as he's no longer a accounted worthy to behold the glory of God. Verse 16 and 17, all they that see thee shall narrow, of, of Isaiah 14, all they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, and made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. We see the dragon give its power unto the beast. Revelation 13, 4 and 18, and the beast appearing to all flesh in possession of his mark. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 31 and 32. Verse 18, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. Isaiah 14, 18. We see all flesh with the mark of the beast residing in their graves, destroyed at the second advent of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 30, verse 23 makes it absolutely crystal clear. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death into the house appointed for all living. Psalm chapter 49, verse 17 through 20. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 which of course is the second advent of Jesus Christ where the, the um, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, 9 and then that wicked shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. 1, Th 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 through 18 where it depicts the, the dead rising first and then the saints rising to meet the Lord in the air and of course Revelation 21 through 6 we have the millennial judgments of the, the righteous and the saints in the, in the holy city as we are performing the final work of judgment and um, all those that have the mark of the beast are resting in their graves. So verse 19 and 20 But thou art cast out of their grave like an abominable branch, and as a raiment of those that are slain, thus through the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass under under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them of Arrow, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The evil of evil doers, evil doers shall never be renowned. We see, we see, and that's the passage. We see the power of the beast return under the dragon, as Satan is given one thousand years to witness the full devastating results of his rebellion, as his attempted coup in heaven to usurp the throne of God, in which one third of the angelic host transformed in a subordinate measure into his likeness came to conclusion within the soul of natural man imparting Satan's seal within the constitution of man claiming dominion as the rightful ruler over man Isaiah 40 Isaiah chapter 4, 54 verse 16 Roman chapter 6 verse 12 through 14 where we we see let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should abandon the lesser thereof. Um, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So the seal of God imparts this dominion. It imparts the mark of the beast, excuse me, the seal of Satan imparts the mark of the beast upon all those and, uh, that are manifestly declared to have it. And it gives Satan the right to a permanent dominion within the soul of man as as it, he claims falsely as the rightful ruler over man so Job chapter 41 verse 34 he buildeth all high things he is a king over all the children of pride Job chapter 12 
And this was the conclusion. Isaiah 14, 19, and 20, we have Satan residing upon earth to witness the his dominion and his rule over men as everybody is in their graves and he's left as in his spiritual form. He's no longer the beast. The, 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 bow, the power of the beast returns unto the dragon in verse 19 and 20 of Isaiah chapter 14. He's in spiritual form again and he gets a thousand years while the saints are in the holy city performing, we're in the holy city performing the final work of judgment and all the wicked dead with the mark of the beast are resigned to the graves until the end of the thousand years. So Job 41, 34, he beholdeth all, all, all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Job chapter 12, 12 verse 17 and 19, he leadeth counselors, counselors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools. He, he leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grow up in the dark without light, and he that maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. And we discussed yesterday that the wilderness, actually, that as the, the captives of, of Lucifer, of Satan, as he, tra as he transformed into um, Satan, as Lucifer transformed into Satan and then captivated all flesh with the mark of the beast, that appears in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, um, um, that wilderness, when they declare, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? and did shake kingdoms that made the world as a wilderness. This is a reference to the fact that these people are residing without the glory of God as a beast, and they are they have the mark of the beast. They're just as beasts that reside within the, the, the analogy is as man is now, just as the beasts that we understand that reside in nature, in the in, in say like in a nature preserve, and you understand that there's all these animals in there. Well, that's how this is being depicted on people that have the mark of the beast. So, and it's right there in Isaiah 14, 16, and 17, that as these people experience their Luciferian transformation into Satan, they experience it, the, their, their, their vertical detachment from the glory of God, just as Lucifer experiences is it as they receive the mark of the beast. And that's what the scriptures here are depicting. And of course, the, the last line of Job chapter 12, verse 25, they grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. This is a direct reference to satanic captivity within uh, the the kingdom of Babylon, where the beast and the harlot are depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. To me, in my thinking, this points as a direct reference, this says this is this is what this is explicating. As the, the, these people are are drunk, they're drunk with the spirit of Antichrist, and they are spiritually they are God views them as they're drunk. They're just like a drunken man because they have the spirit of Antichrist and they have let loose their all restraint in the final moments of earth's history with the mark of the beast and the terrible things happen upon the earth of course we know so and verse 22 says he discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out the light to light the shadow of death this is made this may be this to me this appears to be a reference of people beholding satan as their king not only maybe as the beast but in we know in the third advent at the third advent of Jesus Christ, when the, when we descend from the holy city, and all those that have the mark of the beast surround the holy city, we know they are they are right in communications. They're, they see all the demons of hell, and they see Satan in his in his in his state as of, of which he exists today in his spiritual form. So uh, this is a this is a very dire and a disastrous uh, verse of scripture. Job 12, 22, he discovers deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. And verse 16, with him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. And verse 16, Job 12, 16, Revelation 12, 7 through 9, when Satan is cast out of heaven, he and 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 it, the the woe is declared in verse 12, Revelation chapter verse. 12 verse 7 through 9 and 12 the woe is declared upon the inhabitants of the world because satan has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time he's depicted as the inhabitation of deceit as he conceals his presence from man and the cognizance of man and man's cognizance of him within his environment and that's why he is depicted as the abode of deceit in Revelation chapter. I mean, immediately, as soon as he's cast out of heaven, boom, here's the, this is the deceiver. And this is one who's, who's going to lead all flesh into false paths that look righteous, 
but they're actually pathways. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It's a pathway to the pit of destruction where all souls go. Just as, just as the horrible wars, like it with Nazi Germany and, you know, the Holocaust, this is exactly how God is depicting the, the accumulation of souls for those that receive the mark of the beast. They are being gathered to the pit for their own destruction. And it's just totally satanic. And if, you know, it's a, it's a, it, what Hitler did in Nazi Germany, it was just, was nothing compared to what's going to happen with the mark of the beast. And as people are led into the pit of destruction and they are, they, death's residence takes up its permanent abode and man is only cognizant, man's not cognizant of his deception that Satan is residing with him. So, Back to verse 16 and 17. All they that see these of Isaiah 14. All they that see these shall now look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, and made the world in his wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? We see vertical detachment from the glory of God within all souls whom receive the mark of the beast as Luciferian transformation exchanges the light of life for a permanent residence. In darkness, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and 6 and 7, I can think of no better passage of Scripture that explicates the entrance of the Holy Spirit into darkened people's hearts, giving people the light of life and the ability to begin to, to, to breathe in the spirit of life and to start struggling to save their lives from the pit of destruction and the eternal darkness that is obviously surrounding our world today. We're not in Nazi Germany yet, but we're seeing we're seeing fascism rise in the United States just as it did in Nazi Germany many, many years ago in the 20s and 30s. So of the 20th century. So verse 16 and 17 we see Vertical detachment from the glory of God within all souls who receive the mark of the beast as Luciferian transformation exchanges the light of life for a permanent residence in darkness. And these people are absolutely captive. Between verse 15 and 16, you know, to, uh, let's see, man, thousands, thousands of years transpire. I mean, there, it takes no time at all in God's time frame for God to witness that once Lucifer is cast out of heaven, as as he transformed into Satan, to his 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 permanent dwelling until the war between good and evil ends for the entire universe, you know, I mean, it just boom immediately. All flesh, we see the appearing of all flesh that have the mark of the beast from verse fifteen, where Lucifer's captivity is declared, his transformation comes to the full, and his captivity is declared, and then verse sixteen, boom, all flesh has the mark of the beast that doesn't have the seal of God. I mean, it just, it was that fast. It just, you know, a short work with the Lord make of the, of the earth, you know? So, uh, Verse 16 to 17, we see vertical detachment from the glory of God within all souls who receive the mark of the beast as Luciferian transformation exchanges the light of life for a permanent residence in darkness. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, and 6 and 7. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. English Standard Version, the darkness has never overpowered it. Um, John chapter 1, verse 5, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Job chapter 34, verse 21 and 22. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his going. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. They can, there's nowhere any flesh, any soul can hide themselves and their thoughts from the presence of Holy Father God. Psalm chapter 69, verse 21 through 25. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not, that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let not, let none dwell in their tents. This is a, a to me. That this we know the abomination of desolation is the mark of the beast. the The abomination of desolation is the appearing of the beast, 
and the, the 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 mark of the beast is 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 also the abomination of desolation that appears upon all flesh that are captivated with the mark of the beast. But verse twenty five of Psalm sixty nine is uh, to me, let none dwell in their tents. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. Is To me, this is another reference to the vertical detachment from the glory of God as the light of life withdraws from all flesh that receive the mark of the beast in final moments of earth's history. Psalm 69, verse 21 through 25. Job, Job chapter 18, verse 5 and 6. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, the spark of his, of his fire shall not shine, the light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candles shall be put out within him. The, the light shall be dark within his, his in ha habitation, within his, his, uh, his, the temple of God is what's being depicted here. You know, so this is just, this is, to me, this is a, another, a, an obvious reference to the fact of, 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 of Luciferian vertical detachment from the glory of God that that flesh will all flesh will experience that cannot maintain the love of God in their lives and the glory of God by the gospel of Jesus Christ in the final moments of earth's history. Verse 16 through 18 of Job chapter 18, His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above his branch shall be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the streets he shall be driven he shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world i mean you can't mistake this this is absolutely this is to me in my thinking this appears to be a direct reference to the light of life departing from the souls of men that receive the mark of the beast proverbs chapter 24 verse 19 through 21 Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. This is an amazing passage of scripture, and it appears to me, you know, the, the Bible says, Jesus, God declares, I'm the Lord thy God, and I change not. His laws are eternal. His laws and his holiness is eternal, and it's never been corrupted, and it never will change for man. The only thing that changes is man changes within himself and leaves the holiness and the habitation of God to go about his own way and to reside in sin as he deceives himself that judgment will fall and one day ultimately it will cost him his life. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 and 21, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt? I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of, of the daughter of my people? My people recovered. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold upon me. This is God declared to me, this appears to be God declaring the 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 destruction, him witnessing that the mark of the beast come upon all souls that made enemies of his children and he rendered judgment upon them and imparted the mark of the beast upon them after his judgment and his he the judgment was satisfied upon all flesh righteous and unrighteous after judgment was satisfied god imparted the mark of the beast and he's witnessing appeared this appears to me he's witnessing all those that are now have experienced in fullness Luciferian's transformation into Satan with the mark of the beast, and their souls are now are now black, and they declare the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. So, the final result of Satan's occupation upon earth within the constitution of man, this is, this is the final result. The mark of the beast is the final result of satanic occupation upon earth within the constitution of man. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and through 18, which is an amazing passage of scripture. As man willfully accepted the inhabitation of deceit, the very work of concealing cognizance of Satan's residence within his soul. Psalm chapter 34, verse 21 and 22. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous 
shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servant, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Here God is, appears to me, God is declaring nobody that trusts and, and, and walks faithfully with God will be left without the glory of God and receive the mark of the beast. No mark of the beast. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The abomination of desolation is the appearing of the beast in our world. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Jeremiah chapter nine verse six, thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me. John chapter six, verse twenty seven through twenty nine. Lab Jesus Jesus states, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto eternal life, unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man hath given unto you. For him he for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who sent him. Who, excuse me, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. So this is this is the work of God. This is the work of God as to believe, and because once you once you're touched by God, you know, you know the truth, and the truth sets you free, and that is the manifestation. The the abode of deceit is because nobody would choose death over life. No reasonable thinking person would choose to drink poison disguised as lemonade. And Satan knows that. So he has to conceal himself within all flesh as the abode of deceit. And so the very work of escaping satanic captivity is to believe on him that sent, that, that sent, that he hath sent. To believe on him that he hath sent. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said, said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Okay? Uh Proverbs eight, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. So this is the, the the mark of the beast is the final result of Satan's occupation upon earth within the constitution of man as man willfully accepted the inhabitation of deceit to the very work of concealing cognizance of Satan's residence within his soul. Psalm 34, 21 and 22, Jeremiah 9, 6, thy inhabitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me. John chapter 6, verse 27 through 29, works made manifest, exchanging the truth for a lie, revealing man's cohabitation with death. Luke 11, 44, which is, I believe is an amazing passage of scripture um, Jesus, that when Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. Woe and describes Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye, as, ye are as graves which appear not, and the men, which, the men that walk over them are not aware of them. He's declaring, Jesus is declaring, these people are leading people into the pit of destruction with the mark of the beast where Satan is, they're, they're, they're the abode of deceit. They, they're, they're, they are the, the, he's declaring the inhabitation of death within their hearts as they labor to deceive the entire world. Judaism, when Jesus died, when Jesus came and died in resurrection, Judaism was dead. I believe when, when Judaism was dead, it was already dead. I, but the, the the prophets teach that Judaism actually was in a probationary period. And it didn't it didn't die until they stoned Stephen. Okay, but I personally believe that when Jesus showed up, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth a son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem that were under the law, that we might we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians chapter four verse four through six. I believe that when Jesus showed up on the scene. That the Jews, in predestination, they had they God knew their works and He knew that they had sealed their faith. Galatians chapter four verse four through six. But the fullness of the time was come. God sent forth the Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem that, that them that were under the law, that we that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because of your sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So we see. Um, 
these works making manifest the exchanging of truth for a lie, revealing man's cohabitation with death. Luke 11, 44, Romans 3, 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips. That's the complete tra spiritual transformation of the spirit of Antichrist from the image of the beast to the creature, explicated in Romans 3, 13. Hebrews 3, 1, Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Romans 7, 5. For when we are in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Revelation 22, 14, and 15. Whosoever and loveth that loveth and maketh a lie will not inherit eternal life. These are people being depicted without the holy city, Ecclesiastes 9, 12. So, the prince of darkness, this is, this is the works of the prince of darkness, captivating man in unbelief, working vertical detachment from the glory of God. And that's all he has to do. That's, all he, he's, that's how he conceals himself in the heart of man as the abode of deceit. He gets people spouting a lie, living a lie, as, as he resides within their souls. And as they go further and further into darkness, they go further and further in unbelief away from the glory of Holy Father God. The prince of darkness captivating man in unbelief working vertical. This work, unbelief, works vertical detachment from the glory of God. John chapter 5, verse 36 through 38. Unbelief in the word of God works vertical detachment from the glory of God. John chapter 5 verse 30 John chapter 5 verse 36 excuse me through 43 Wait wait did I I didn't do that right I'm in the wrong spot John 6, John 5, 36 through 40. Here we go. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye shall receive." I think that's pretty straightforward right there, what Jesus is explicating. It's just an amazing passage of Scripture, and I've always been fascinated by it. It's got a, a voluminous amount of works in it, but Jesus is stating, because they believe not, they cannot retain the, the, the glory of God as manifested through the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God, and their works do testify and witness to who their Father is. And they are, they're laboring horizontally for the glory of the world, and they're not laboring for the honor that comes from God only, and obeying the word of God, and magnifying the likeness of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, cultivating the fruits of righteousness, and thus magnifying the glory of God in their lives. Isaiah 8, 20 through 22, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them, 1 John 2, 10, 11. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Here is a direct reference to the pathways of evil men being led into the worst holocaust to ever occur into satanic captivity with the mark of the beast. Psalm 28, 1. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest I, if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. This is a, to me, this appears to be a direct reference to satanic's in, Satan's inhabitation within the bottomless pit. And that's depicted in Revelation chapter uh, 9, verse 7 through 11. John chapter 6, verse 63 through 69. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you 
that believe not. Okay? For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. They knew and they believed, and that's accounted to a man as righteousness. Because when man believes, he, he can receive love, he can receive the glory of God, he acts on that. Men that love their children take care of their children, and God is the exact same way. They, they believe the love, and they act on it throughout their lives. And a, an entire life of servitude to your children can seem like nothing at all when it comes to conclusion, and you are satisfied that you have raised up children of righteousness within your likeness. And it's the same thing in the glory in the kingdom of Holy Father God. John chapter 14, verse 21 through 24. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. This is a way to never the to to make sure that you never step out of the holiness of God, and Satan can never seal you with the mark of the beast. If you have the commandments of God, it's a ten sided fortress and evil spiritually, when the seal of God comes, evil will no longer have access to what was your flesh or your soul. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is his that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which hath sent me. People that do not retain the glory of God cannot retain the word of God. The word of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ that magnifies the glory of God in man's soul. Men believe on it, they obey, and in life and in death they're sealed unto eternal life by the manifest power of our our magnificent God and his son, Jesus Christ. So John chapter five, verse 24, in conclusion, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed unto death, passed from death, passed, excuse me, passed from death unto life. Yeah, it, but is passed from death unto life. Okay. So we see in this, this vertical detachment that, that Lucifer experiences in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15, that occurs on people that receive the mark of the beast. In Isaiah 14, 16, and 17, we see this natural man transforming into a sub subordinate creature without the glory of God. Isaiah fi chapter 50, verse 10 and 11. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6 through 9. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, James chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, and 2 Timothy, three, chapter course 3, 13, but evil men and true shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is, this is what's occurring. This is natural man transforming into a subordinate creature without the glory of God, the cup of devils, fulfillment and overflow, the manifest presence of Antichrist. Proverbs chapter 6. Excuse me, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And remember, the 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 spirit, the 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 false apostate Christianity, as she drinks in in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, of the spirit of Antichrist, I personally believe is primarily drinking in of her abominations as she stands before the Lord in a lie 
and labors to perpetuate a lie to magnify her own glory horizontally amongst men. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. These, th these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and, and heart heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that, that be shift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord amongst the brethren. So guys, we know the image to the beast promotes and promulgates the multiplicity of lies as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist to compound the distress of God's people. James chapter 3 verse 14 through 18. I'm going to read this for you. We know the image of the beast promotes and promulgates the multiplicity of lies as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist to compound the distress of God's people. James chapter 3, verse 14 through 18. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and glory not in yourself and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For it, where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So we know the image of the beast promotes and promulgates the multiplicity of lies as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist to compound the distress of God's people. James chapter 3 verse 14 through 18. And thus it forces the, as it's doing so, it's forcing the general population to search out and maintain fundamental truths. Psalm, Psalm chapter 25 verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth and unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Let me read that again. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Okay, Psalm chapter 25 verse 10. Psalm chapter 91 verse 6. So let me go back here. So we know the image of the beast promotes and promulgates the multiplicity of lies as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist to compound the distress of God's people. James 3, 14 through 18. And thus, while it is doing so, it's forcing what we're witnessing on national television as people are compounding and promoting, promulgating the multiplicity of lies. It's forcing the general population to search out and maintain their own personal fundamental truths. Psalm 25, verse 10. Psalm chapter 91, verse 1 through 6. And this is what there is happening as people are proactively, psychologically assessing, doing assessments within themselves to keep one's abode of personal safety and welfare within their own environments. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 through 21. Matthew chapter 10, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Where the word of God says... Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods blew, and the and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. This is depicting the inhabitation of the Spirit of Grace within the within the soul of man as man is retaining the spirit of grace as as death is coming within the final holocaust and bombarding man psychologically to remove the glory of god and impart the inhabitation of deceit within the soul of man and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man Excuse me, and everyone that hear, therefore whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and the beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. This is, a, to me, appears to be a direct reference of 
men falling into captivity with the mark of the beast as they their the inhabitation of the spirit of grace departs from them and their houses are manifestly they fall they fall away from the glory of God and they suffer the same fate that Lucifer did in his transformation into Satan so Let's read this again. So we know the image of the beast promotes and promulgates the multiplicity of lies as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist to compound the distress of God's people, James 3, 14 through 18. And thus, while it is doing so, it's forcing the general population to search out and to maintain fundamental truths. Psalm 25, 10, Psalm chapter 91, verse 1 through 6. Pro and and as, as they're doing this, these are proactive psychological assessments to keep one's abode of personal safety and welfare within their own environment. James, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 through 21, Matthew chapter 10, verse 21, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. This is the very administration of the image to the beast as the abode of deceit, the very inhabitation of death sealed within man labors to captivate all flesh in a lie. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 as the image to the beast labors for civil and ecclesiastical power to perform public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice Isaiah chapter 59 verse 9 and 10 to force all flesh to serve without discretion in love as the receivers of the mark of the beast. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12. And then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, hate one another, iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What's this, this, this is depicting this love waxing cold is Luciferian transformation into Satan that occurs upon all flesh that receives the mark of the beast in the final moments of earth's history. That's what Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12 is explicating, and it's exactly what Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27 is explicating in the fall of the habitation of man. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30 and 31. This is satanic occupation within the image of the beast, concealed by the inhabitation of deceit within man, cloaked in a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11 makes it absolutely crystal clear. These people went around. The Holy Spirit has informed me. These people went around for 10 years telling people all they said is that they know where Satan's seat is. Okay? People that are laboring to impart to captivate other people on pain of death to serve them sexually and monetarily are not cultivating a harvest of righteousness. It is 100% impossible for them to do so. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 through 11 makes this absolutely crystal clear. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment and that ye may approve things that are excellent and that ye may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God. Okay? The image of the beast went around for a decade, over this, this last decade, telling people that it knows where Satan's seat is. That's all it said, because they don't know anything. They, don't, they haven't received anything. The only thing that they've learned, they've learned from me, okay? What they've learned, they've learned from me. People that are laboring to vertically detach the American public from constitutional protections and federal oversight, welfare, and constitutional incorporation so they can summarily execute people to satiate their own satanic desires, vertically detaching people from the glory of God, forcing people to serve without discretion in love that causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. It's That's what they're doing. They're vertically detaching people and incorporating the abode of deceit to force people to serve them without discretion in love as they pour out the spirit of Antichrist, they solicit the worship of death in the administration of the image to the beast. Everything that they say is a lie. Everything everything they say is poison disguised by lemonade. The Bible makes that absolutely crystal clear. And they're leading the entire world with the multiplicity of lies. They're forcing people to search for truth. And unfortunately, Satan's waiting 
the inhabitation of deceit, cloaked in the fraudulent cloak of righteousness, Satan is waiting in that fraudulent cloak of righteousness to impart the boat of deceit and to lead people into one great big lie and into captivity with the mark of the beast. Okay? And that's, it's. I mean, the, the, the entire administration of the image of the beast is to promote and promulgate the multiplicity of lies and to torment people in their flesh until they become so enraged that, and desperate that they're willing to, to take a lie. They're willing, you know, to do anything to escape the torments that they're going through. And that's the manifestation of the, the ministry of the image to the beast is to, to bring the ultimate manifestation of a lie, the inhabitation of death as poison disguised as lemonade and make that manifest in the temple of God within the, our world and to summon forth the appearing of the beast as the children of Satan are becoming satiated and fulfilling, regenerating their blood in fullness with the spirit of Antichrist, summoning the demons of hell into their presence and transforming in perfection into a child of Satan in the presence of God. Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.